Hello friends, I'm Ashish Dabari, founder and CEO of Aximize, and to our new listeners, welcome, and to our old ones, welcome back. In the last podcast, we talked about what a system on chip is and what are the various verification challenges that are facing the design and verification community. And we talked about functional safety, security, low power as some of the most important ones that actually confound all of the design and verification engineers. In today's podcast, I would like to outline the basics of different test and verification techniques used in the industry. So let me start with simulation. So simulation-based verification is the cornerstone in all design verification today. In simulation, what happens usually is we create a model of the design that is being tested and we simulate this model of the design. And the way we do this is we send in some known specific manually generated stimuli, you know, some combination of zeros and ones, if you like. And then what happens is when the stimuli is sent in, one observes the effect of this on the design by comparing the observed behavior with a reference model. So there's always this concept of a reference model, which is what we expect the design to exhibit. So the comparison of the design behavior with the reference model is not done manually, but is done through some automated software code in the test bench, and it uses checkers and scoreboards, etc. This is certainly the case with um, what is known as constrained random simulation-based verification, also known popularly as UVM, uh, although UVM stands for uh, Universal Verification Methodology, and uh, previously to UVM, we had VMM, OVM, all of the other methodologies to actually uh, talk about how you instrument this environment for constraint random verification. How do you combine stimulus generation, checkers, scoreboards, etc.? So with constraint random simulation, the stimulus injection is randomized in the presence of constraints. So as you may have guessed, the name itself, uh, constraint random. And usually these constraints are derived uh, from some environmental conditions in which the design would actually be running in practice in the field. So remember we said we are simulating a model of the design, right? So, so the constraints can model, for example, the interaction of the design with registers, with firmware, drivers, or even software. The real power of EVM comes from the ability to randomize over what is theoretically an infinite space of all possible input combinations. So you know in the first podcast I mentioned the 64-bit space. So 2 to the power 64 possible input combinations to send in to exhaustively verify a design. It's not feasible, at least from a simulation point of view. So then what do the constraint random simulation based verification engineer, what would he or she typically do is they will focus on boundary conditions on the extremes without randomization and then focus on generating a lot of random stimulus in the middle. But then it still pecks the question as to how does one know that actually you are done with the verification, even with this arbitrary randomization. So what simulation-based verification engineers do is employ what is known as coverage to decide how much of the input space has been covered and how much of the design space has been covered in terms of checking. So these are more uh, detailed topics and I'll go into them in later podcasts, but in short, it is best to say that we use functional coverage and structural coverage, often known as code coverage, to decide the, the completeness of the verification, so as to say. So another kind of well-known and widely used form of simulation is directed testing. In directed testing, specific directed test sequences are sent. For example, um, this is, by the way, the testing is also done at a model of the design. Um, so we could send program a processor's register to then make it do a read or a write to a certain peripheral on an SOC, like a Bluetooth controller, and then we can check whether the data was read or written correctly. Um, 
It is usually done usually at the full SOC level, not at the level of an individual IP. But if you go back in the history of directed testing, you would notice that actually a lot of the early uh, processor testing was done like this by sending in uh, specific instruction sequences on the processor and then checking whether the outcome matched the expected model, expected result of the test. So, but but I would say more or less these days that the concept of directed testing is usually done at the SOC level. And usually there is no um, coverage in, in this uh, space. So, you know, this is the important thing to understand that the coverage side is usually not focused that much. Let us um, talk about another popular and essential form of simulation-oriented testing called emulation-based verification. So, you know, whereas in simulation, one is simulating a model of the actual design, in emulation, the actual design is being verified. It is driven by drivers, uh, software drivers, firmware, operating systems, and in some cases, even the software applications are being put in. So whereas in simulation-based verification, uh, either constrained, random, or directed, we're actually using a model of the design, and we're using constraints to model the environment um, in which the design would actually be run in practice. In emulation, the real environment is already present in C2 inside the emulator. And this is why emulator-based testing is so important because you're actually testing the design as if it was going to be in the field. And emulators run orders of magnitude faster than simulators. They're run on a specific hardware. Uh, it's often derived out of custom FPGAs, field programmable gate arrays. We can come into that a little later in some podcast, explain what FPGAs are. But I would highly recommend, uh, if you're interested in uh, reading up on emulation, an excellent article from uh, my friend Lauro Rosati. Uh, it's on Electronics Design Magazine, and it is titled 11 Myths of Emulation. You can Google for it if you like, and you should be able to get this. But you know, the real reason I said emulation is simulation-oriented is because the input stimulus sent into the emulated design is still a specific input sequence. Never mind that the environment is as real as it could be, but the input is derived from drivers or software stack or firmware, but it is still quite a specific sequence. And it is not actually exhaustive by any means, just because of the sheer number of input combinations. The goal of emulator-based testing is also not to explore exhaustiveness from that angle. It is actually to explore the interaction of environment with the actual design being tested, and seeing what, if any issues are found. But you know what, everybody does want more exhaustive results. So talking about exhaustive and coping with an infinite size stimulus space, it's a good time to talk about my favorite topic, formal verification. So formal verification is different from all simulation-based verification paradigms, as one does really not have to craft any manual stimulus. And the checks are often done exhaustively. In fact, one is able to prove through a mathematical proof beyond doubt that a given requirement holds of a design on all possible input combinations and all reachable states of the design being tested. In formal verification, the formal tool is trying to prove or disprove, almost like we do in maths, that a given requirement is stated as a mathematically precise piece of syntax. It tries to work out the proof of, of this requirement. And in order to do that, the tool automatically computes all possible combinations of input stimulus without the user having to write any. So stimulus is generated in the formal verification space for free. This is a massive win in terms of time and bring up for verification as compared to the simulation-based paradigms. We will go uh, into more depth of formal verification in a later podcast, but there is another kind of verification technique which I will not be able to go into detail today, which is called FPGA-based prototyping. And in principle, it has a lot in common with um, emulation, and at some point we'll discuss this in more detail. So in practice, most semiconductor companies employ a good combination of constrained random simulation, directed testing, emulation, formal verification, and FPGA-based prototyping. The challenge, however, remains in, is in understanding when to use 
which of these verification techniques and how to get the most out of that specific technology. You know, a topic which we often call methodology. So in our next podcast, we will go deeper in the topic of formal verification. But I hope you liked today's podcast and I was hopeful to try and cover a lot of different verification technologies which are quite complex and well discussed in the, in the literature. Um, but yeah, do let us know. Uh, email us at info at axiomize.com with your suggestions, feedback, questions. Do uh, go and visit our YouTube channel, uh, Axiomize YouTube channel. And let's stay connected, sign up for our newsletters. And thank you very much for listening to us and wishing you well and stay fit and stay healthy. <laughs>